Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are gathered here tonight for the uh, the January, what date is it? 17th, uh, 2024. This is a meeting of the statewide League of Women Voters of Florida Clean Energy Action Team. Uh, thank you all for, for coming here tonight. Um, myself and, and Maxine Connor are, are our co-chairs and uh, we look forward to uh, to interacting with all of you and, uh, and a, a wonderful speaker here tonight. Uh, typically we would have uh, Seoul United Neighbors represented. Typically that would be Heaven Campbell. Um, she, we won't have that tonight. She's doing a little bit of physical therapy. So that's, so, she needs to take care of herself and uh, she will be back with us on, in February. And uh, she said she's got some cool news about uh, two co-ops that are getting launched at the same time. So we'll hear more about that. Yeah, yeah, more more to come. That number seems to be, well, the last time I looked around 85, 86 co-ops. So golly, you remember, you remember when 2015 was rolling around, we just had two little pilots and who knew that it would grow this much? So that's exciting. Success. All right, well, yeah. <laughs> well, tonight we have uh, a person with, I think a lot of us already know, but we're glad to have her join us. She's been on this call before. Um, Kim Ross is, is your title the executive director? Um, or what do you call yourself? Yes, <laughs> uh, we, this will be a new announcement for everybody, but I, my title is now co-executive director. Okay, um, oh, thank you, Greg. All that right. will be rolled out in the February newsletter for Rethink Energy Florida. All right, we're getting a you know some breaking news here. Okay, you are. Yeah, Rethink uh, Flor Energy Florida. Uh, so yeah, we certainly you know have a lot of um, alignment and synergy with with uh, Kim's group. So yeah, she's going to uh, share with us a, a a new initiative that uh, we think we all need here in Florida. There's so much we need here in Florida. So there's a lot to be working on. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Kim. She's going to make a presentation. And then if you would hold your questions, I will stop the recording at the end of her presentation. And that will appear on the um, League's YouTube channel uh, in a few days, not overnight, but in a few days. And you'll you'll find out, you know, uh, I'll try to send an email to everybody that, hey, it's it's there and here's the link. So, okay, well, Kim, this is your time. Excellent, can you uh, can you make me a co-host so I can oh, share my yes. screen? Yes, 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 yes. Awesome. So good to have you all. I know I've um, been on here a couple of times and um, I know some of you have heard um, about this project that I'm gonna talk about tonight um, in the past. We do have some new updates for you. Um, and so um, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, so I am, um, as I said, the co-executive director of Rethink Energy Florida. Our mission is to educate, engage, and empower Floridians to take action to achieve a just transition for clean energy through youth education, adult engagement, and community organizing. Um, and I, I'm going to go through these slides real fast. We have a great internship program. Um, our interns really make the, make the world go um, wonderfully um, in terms of their energy, but also um, they really help us get our mission out there. Um, we have our youth education program, including our energy camp. Um, we have adult engagement. In fact, I think, yep. Um, a quick note, uh, I know you guys are up at the Capitol, League of Women Voters is up at the Capitol next um, uh, next week, so are we. We share a, a, um, a day of advocacy, but if you happen to have nothing going on at 9 a.m. on January 24th or at 11 a.m., come out to our press conference and rally at 9 and the culture event by Alianza at 11. Um, and then um, community organizing, that's in the communities, working, working with people. Um, we do a lot up here in Tallahassee. Um, but we do have people around the state, including Susan Steinhauser um, down there in Broward County. So um, I'm here, though, to talk today about the Upper Limit Project, or Keep Florida Above Water. Um, and I'm going to hide, this, um, hide my floating meeting controls here for a minute. Um, so we the, the Keep Florida Above Water Project came about um, 
really a couple of years ago at this point. Um, and it takes advantage of the conversation that we're already having in Florida out there at the legislature in our day-to-day -day interactions, in our interactions at the local level, we are already talking about sea level rise. And as we're talking about sea level rise, we're talking about, we're even spending money on sea level rise. So it takes advantage of the success that our movement our, um, together has already had around how do we get people to think about what's gonna impact our state. Um, and it's a state problem, it's a local problem, it's a national and an international problem. Um, and we believe that by turning the focus to sea level rise, we can actually get the work done even faster. And so um, Mary shared with me a day or two ago, um, a great article and it said, if you're gonna ask people for something, make them an offer. And so um, my offer to you is that we can be successful if we can join together and really lift up this movement. Um, and I'll tell you more about the movement in a minute. Um, but my ask to you is, and my offer to you is that, hey, let's, let's be successful together. Um, that feeling of success, um, we've had it in, at Rethink Energy Florida and in a lot of other um, organizations that came in, came to co coalition together, including League of Women Voters. Um, we have seen the work, the effort put in at the local level and building a coalition at the local level and then having it go um, make movement at the state level. So, um, and that was when we fought um, as Floridians against fracking and we fought some pro-fracking regulatory bills that were um, out there in 2012, 13, 14, 15. And in 16, we saw them flail and die, the pro-fracking bills. Um, and we saw that because of action at the, at the local level. Um, and in particular, by the time we got to 2016, through the efforts and through the coalition that we built, through all of the work that was done, wow. we had 82% yes. We had 82% of Floridians Where? that were office? represented. Oh, um, that we had 82% of Floridians that were represented by local governments at the at the local level that had either passed a resolution or had passed an ordinance banning fracking. So we had that great success. Um, and we saw that and we saw the pressure that that ended up putting on um, our state elected officials. Um, and we saw them, against all odds, defeat a bill, vote down a bill in committee. That's something that very rarely happens. Usually you see a bill um, just not get not get put on the committee agenda. Um, but this bill, bill got voted down in its third and final committee in 2016. Um, so back to the upper limit project and um, back to the keep Florida above water. We're on track already for two feet of sea level rise by 2050. Um, and I, I think I'm preaching to the choir here, so I'm gonna go fast. You know, flooding disruptions increase. We have sewage overflow and backups, drinking water infiltrated by sea level seawater. If we go above two feet though, we're gonna see a lot more we see exponentially property loss um, happening. We see water and sewage systems actually failing and we see eroded shorelines and saltwater intrusion that's actually harming the um, estuary ecosystems, harming the Everglades um, and wildlife. So what we wanna do is keep that, keep both the sea level as low as possible and keep the rate of return or the rate the rate it's increasing um, as low as possible. Um, and we think, of course, how do we do this? So this is this is just one of these exponential things. So the expense of sea level rise in Florida to homeowners above two feet, it just really it starts um, going up there. And th these are pictures from 
you know, it's real. It's happening now. Um, our intern, Stella Nunez, her mom took um, pictures back in, in um, Fort Lauderdale in April, and she was stuck in her car for over four hours. So we know it's happening. We know it's real. I know I'm preaching to the choir here. Um, but what we aim to do with the Upper Limit Project is to shift that conversation so that we're not just spending money, we're spending billions of dollars on adapting to sea level rise. That's in, that is necessary at this point. We can't not do that. Um, but we want to use that progress that we've already made to shift the conversation to start talking about, well, how much, what is that upper limit to, to sea level rise? What is, um, and, and then once we have, once we say, yes, there's a sea level rise upper limit, then how are we going to keep it below that upper limit? Um, and then in, in particular also, how are we going to make sure that our pillars of our economy, I mean, think of it, tourism, agriculture, um, fisheries, right? Um, development for that matter. How are we going to actually protect the economy um, to make sure that we continue to thrive as a state? Um, and that, that is for 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 me. That's a that's a talking point that's important to to talk about, right? Because that's what our colleagues or are the people that we um, elect down at the legislature is, are talking about. There's, that's 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 in their head. So again, using that upper limit to then prioritize climate pollution re reduction strategies so that we're addressing that root cause. Um, and so we want to get to the point where the state of Florida declares an upper limit. Sounds kind of lofty, I know. I know those of you who go to the Capitol feel like that's lofty. Um, but this also, and and this is my main point, this can be done at the at the at the local level first. Um, and I'll give some examples in just a minute. And at the local level, we can establish pro programs and policies that reduce climate pollution. Um, and then, of course, it can't be done just in the state. Then we have to actually advocate at the national and international levels to secure a global emissions pathway that's consistent. So again, we're talking about shifting that that framework in order to um, make it be something that we can talk about that really has saliency with the people as they think about what's going on um, in their lives. So, um, and then in Florida, especially um, efficiency, solar storage, electrification of transportation, these are these are the, the low, easy hanging fruit that, that it getting that up and running at the, at the level that we need to be um, for the state is the first step. Um, and we also have had conversations about the upper limit for heat. We don't have a pithy statement like, Keep Florida above water. Keep Florida above water was message tested, um, and some of the imagery that we use is message tested. We have not done that for up, um, upper level limit for heat yet, um, just because we haven't moved that on. But we do, as we, you know, it's winter, it's freezing cold right now. But as we move into the summer, and especially as we think about last summer and how hot it was, um, you know, I think something like it's hot enough already, right? Those are some of the things um, that we can message around, um, and we don't want to. Um, ignore heat. Um, and so, yeah, you know, last summer we saw so many um, climate anomalies and events. And, um, and uh, oh, I thought I had a Miami fact here. Oh, yeah, Miami. Okay, so Miami had over, higher than 100 days, um, 100 degrees for 46 consecutive days. And if we get to 2050, with business as usual, we're going to be at over half the year like that. Um, okay, so one way that we're already having these conversations is talking to these folks that have put together the pollution reduction plans They're in the final stages of that now. These plans position the five communities that got a million dollars each to, um, to create the plans to get climate pollution reduction grants. So we're already talking to them about how do we and implement this language as we have these conversations. Um, so, so what we want to do now is pull it on down 
to the resolution strategy. And that's this is my ask of you all, League of Women Voters. Um, and I, I know we had somebody already reach out to me from Sierra Club. Um, but we want to, again, go to those local governments, ask them to recognize the root cause, ask them to recognize that the solutions are needed at the local level, the state level, and beyond. And this will drive public awareness and the conversation changes. Um, and so once we get that going at the local level, we believe that that will trickle up to the to the state level, as we've seen in other issues. Um, and then I'll, I just want to acknowledge right now, uh, we have a few people on the call already um, that are that are part of the team. Brian Lee, many of you know um, my partner and uh, our campaign director for Rethink Energy Florida. Len Barry is on the call. Rafe Pomerantz, I saw a hop on, although I think he says that he says that he's Susan. Um, and Susan Bookman's also a part of that um, conversation as well. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing and let you guys ask me some questions. Cool. And I guess, Mary, you said you were gonna stop the recording. I'm happy oh. for you too, or I'm happy to take um, questions. With you. Kim, if you would, before we stop the recording, I would like mm -hmm. to uh, elaborate on how people can contact you. Great, excellent. I will do that. Um, so they can go uh to rethinkenergyflorida.org right um slash keep florida above water is one way they can also email me at kim at rethinkenergyflorida.org and then they can um call me at 850-888-2565 so and i'll put all that in the chat here um for folks to have so you can get in touch with me all um, right uh, this will conclude the recording and uh, yeah, we hang on here.